Did you miss me? What are you doing here? Am I not allowed to visit you? Again? I miss you. Um, can we talk for a while? I'm busy. I know. That's why I'm here to support you. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I prepared something. What do you want, darling? I can also clean this filthy house. That is not the right time for that. Miss your smile. You're not welcome here. You... You don't want me to be here? Um... Um, darling, here's your favorite. I know that. The red wine. Come on, Dane! You are not my girlfriend anymore! Is it because of Sandra? You are living with her in the same house. I should have listened to my friends. Now tell me, what did I do wrong to deserve this kind of treatment? Why are you doing this? I hate this conversation! You hate everything! Everything about me! I really... I really work hard for this relationship. But you didn't appreciate it. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And this bracelet alone would bring 500,000 passes that I need. <laughs> and with all of this, I should be able to make a brilliant career for myself. <laughs> the first thing I should do would have to make drawings and cuts of figures for my treatises. And that I should print and then clear out. Why do you suppose I don't do this? Hmm. Uh, it must be because you are afraid of being found out. Perhaps I do. But don't you think that a woman of my intelligence should be able to manage it so that it wouldn't be found out? I always go out there to dig out on the hills, alone, without 
What a big, remarkable, so much a little something in one's pocket. Yes. But this poor single bit they say is the dangerous part. Hmm. I should, of course, have smelled at the whole thing. Of course. <laughs> Don't guess without saying. If I wanted to make counterfeit money, well, it would have been necessary to make the gold first. It's remarkable, nevertheless, that if someone were to do what I can bring myself to do, I should acquaint him. But I should not be able to acquaint myself. I should be able to make a brilliant defense for the thief and prove that this gold was no one and that it got into the earth before there were any land rights. And you would not be able to do this if hmm, the thief had stolen from me, but rather as an instance of collector's mania, of scientific interest of the ambition to make a discovery. Isn't that so? You mean that I wouldn't be able to acquaint him if he had stolen through me? No, that is the only instance that the law does not pardon. That is simple theft. That is. That you would not pardon? Pardon? No, I could hardly pardon what the law does not. And I must confess that it would be hard for me to accuse a collector for taking an antique he did not have in his collection, which he had dug up in someone else's property. That is to say, vanity, ambition, could gain pardon where need could not? Yes, that's the way it is. And nevertheless, Need should be the strongest motive, the only one to be part of. But I can change that as a little as I can change my will not to steal under any condition. And you call it a great virtue that you cannot um, steal? <laughs> With me not to steal is just as irresistible as stealing is to some, and therefore no virtue. I cannot do it, and they cannot help doing it. Why don't I take it then? I cannot. It's inability. And a lock is not a virtue. Then you are. Are you afraid of thunder? One should be careful. <laughs> you were a queer fellow. You struck her like a bomb two weeks ago and you introduced yourself as a manager from Manila who was assigned here in Web <laughs> uh, uh, Don't bother about me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you uh, always say when I get tired of talking about myself and wanted to devote a little attention to you. Perhaps because you let me talk so much that you want my sympathy. Well, we were so old acquaintance, and there were no corners for me about you to knock against, or needles or pins to break. There was something so narrow about your personality. <laughs> you were so considerate, a characteristic which only the most cultivated can display. You were never noisy when you came home late. Never made any disturbance when you get up in the morning. You even drew side when ideas became conflicting. In a word, you were the perfect companion. <laughs> but altogether, you were too sensitive, too negative, too quiet. <laughs> Not to have been think about it in the course of time. <laughs> And you were fearful and timid, as if you let it down the line. 
Do you know us to sleep there behind the door? And I can see your back. Oh, <laughs> you can see your back in the mirror. But from you, you look like a friend. A fearless man who goes to meet his fate with open heart. But back you. <laughs> I don't wish to be this gorgeous, but you look like you carry the burden. I said, you're shrinking from a lash. And when I see your red necktie across your shirt, well, it looks like, like a brand. A trademark on a happy bags. I believe I'll suffocate. <sighs> If the shower doesn't break in soon. It will come soon. Just be quiet. Oh, and the back of your neck too. It looks like there were another head on it. With the face of an entire man. Oh, you are so terribly narrow between the ears that I sometimes wonder if you don't belong to another man. Don't one look as if it's right at the police station. At the police station? Yes, but it only looks so. But the stop you want a moment. Sit down now, Gwen. Let's have a talk. Let's hear about the world tomorrow. It's queer that, even though I become so intimate with you so soon, you are one of those people whose likeness I cannot recall when they are out of my sight. And when you are out in the fields, and I try to recall your face, another acquaintance always comes to mind. Someone who doesn't look like you, but whom you resemble nevertheless. Who's that? <laughs> I won't mention the name. However, I used to have dinner at the same place for many years. And there at the lounge counter, I met a brown man with pale and worried eyes. Hmm. He had an extraordinary faculty of getting into crowded room without shoving or being shoved. Standing at the door, he could reach a slice of bread two yards away. <laughs> One day, I happened to read on the paper a big forgery of a well-known civil official. And then I found out that my undefinable acquaintance had been the companion of the forger's brother, and that his name was Marco Antonio. And then I was informed that the aforementioned Antonio had been connected with the free library, but that he was then a police reporter on a big newspaper. How could I then get the connection between the forgery, the police, and the indefinable appearance. I don't know. <laughs> but when I asked a man if Marco Antonio had been convicted, he didn't know. Oh, well, was he ever convicted? Mm, no, he had not been convicted. Did you get to know him afterward? No, I don't want to. Would you have allowed yourself to know him if he had been convicted? Yes, indeed. <laughs> sit still. Why can't you sit quietly? How did, how did you get such a liberal attitude toward people's conduct? <laughs> Are you a Christian? No! <laughs> I couldn't be. I still just heard the Christians demand forgiveness, but I demand punishment for the restoration of balance, or whatever you like to call it. And you, who have ought to understand that? Uh, how do you know that? <laughs> it's plain to be seen. How? How can you see it? I have taught myself. That's an art too. But we won't talk about that much. Now, be so kind as to witness my signature on this note, which I must leave at the Bank of Cabana tomorrow morning when I go.
bother with you. I have no intent to go in Cabana too, Anne. No? No! But you can witness my signature nevertheless. Uh, no, I never signed my name in Any papers. Anymore. That's the fifth time that you're abused to write your name. The first time was on a postal receipt. And it was then that I began to observe you. And now I see that you have horror of touching pen and ink. <laughs> you haven't sent a letter since you've been here. Just one postal card and you wrote with blue pencil. <laughs> Do you see now how I figured out your mistake? Furthermore, this was the seventh time that you refused to go to Cabanatuan, where you have not gone since you've been here. Nevertheless, you came here from Manila just to see Cabanatuan. And every morning you have walked three and a half kilometers just to see Freedom Park. <laughs> Do you see now that I am not so clever, but that you are so stupid? <sighs> Uh, now you hate me. No. Uh, yes, you do. Uh, you must. Here. Take my hand. What the trick is that? Uh, uh, pardon, but the are the first one to offer the hand after knowing. now you are doubting me. It alarms me that after serving your time, you do not feel your honor retrieved. You do not feel on equal footing. In fact, just as good as anyone. Why you tell me how it happened, will you? Uh, yes. But you will believe what I say. I'm going to tell you, though. And you shall see that I was not a common criminal. You shall be convinced that uh, missteps are made, as one might say, uh, involuntarily, uh, spontaneously, uh, without intention, uh, blamelessly. <laughs> Uh, let me open the window. I think the thunder shower has passed over. Go ahead. Ah, uh, you see, I was a student at the University of the Philippines, and once I needed a loan. Oh, you're asking for too much. How will you pay me back? I have no dangerous to be dead, <laughs> as my father has some means. Um, not that much, to be sure. However, I had sent a note of a hand to a man whom I wanted to stand as my security. But contrary to all expectations, it was returned to me with a refusal. <sighs> oh. I sat there benumbed by the blow because I did not know what to do. It was very unpleasant. It was a very disagreeable surprise. Where's my money? Do whatever you need to do. I need my money right now or else I'll sue you. The note lay there on the table. Beside it, the letter of refusal. I glanced hopelessly at the fatal lines which contained my sentence. <laughs> uh, to, be to be sure, it, it was not a that sentence, as I could have um, other men to sign as my security, as many as I wanted for that matter. But as I said, it was a very, very unpleasant surprise. <sighs> I sat there in my innocence. My glance rested gradually on the table, on the signature, which, could it have been in the right place, would have made my future. That signature was very unusual calligraphy. <laughs> you know how, as one is thinking, one can scribble a, a blotter full of meaningless words. I had the pen in my hand, uh, like this. And before I knew what I was doing, 
it started to write. <laughs> of course, I don't want to imply that there was anything mystically spiritualistic behind it. <laughs> because I don't believe in such thing. It was a uh, thoughtless mechanical action when I sat there and copied the signature. Time after time, <sighs> without any prospect of gain, of course. When the letter was scribbled all over, I had acquired skill enough to reproduce the signature remarkably well. Where did you get this money? Well, I know that it's not my business. Anyway, your loan has a 10% interest. Ah! And then I forgot the whole thing! And one last reminder before I go. Be careful next time. <sighs> that night, my sleep was deep and heavy. I feel as if I was dreaming. But the door to my dream opened a little. When I saw the writing table and the note in hand, oh, I was driven absolutely as if after that consideration, I had made a revocable resolution to, to, uh, to write the name of the faithful paper as if I was fulfilling a precious duty. Ah, and they wrote, what can such thing be? Is it inspiration? Hypnotic suggestion, is it called? But from whom? I only slept alone in my room. Ah, could it have been my civilized ego? The barbarian that does not recognize conventions, but he who merged in his criminal will and his inability to calculate the consequences of his need. Tell me, what do you think of such things? To be honest, your story does not quite convince me. There are holes in it. Perhaps that might be the clue for you not being able to remember all the details. And I have read a few things about criminal institutions, and I recall... But never mind. You have had your punishment, and you have had enough character to admit your error, and we will discuss it first. Uh, yes! Uh, yes, yes. We will discuss it. We must, so that I can be fully aware of my unswerving honesty. Thank you. No, I haven't. You see, that's what bothers me. That's what bothers me. Don't you suppose that each one of us has a skeleton in his closet? Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, there are some people who continue to be children all their lives so that they cannot control their lawless desires. And whenever the opportunity comes, the criminal is ready. But I do not understand why you do not feel innocent. As the child is considered responsible, the criminal is considered so too. It's strange. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll regret it later. I killed a man once, but I never had any troubles. You did? Yes, I did. Perhaps you wouldn't want to take a murder. <laughs> oh, what nonsense! Yes, but I have not been punished for it. Ah, so much the better for you. How did you get out of it? There were no accusers, no suspicions, and no witnesses. It happened this way. Merry Christmas, Sandra! Anyways, here's my gift. Thank you. Have a seat. Thanks. 
Hello. This house is really big for you. I suggest that you post a signage outside of this house for a bed spacer. In that way, you'll get 50% of your rental fee. But yet, well, coming from a friend like you, that's a good idea. <laughs> Another thing, I would like to invite you for a few days camping outside of Balar Aurora. You'll surely love the scenery there. Oh, and don't worry, I'll have a driver to meet you. Sounds great. <laughs> okay then, let's go camping next week. Oh, and you can invite your husband if you want. He's actually in Sweden right now, you know, doing business. Oh, I see. I want to invite my husband so we can have a party together. You know, you're my best friend. She sent an old drunken man to meet me, who fell asleep on the coach back and drove us to the gate post, which landed us in the ditch. <laughs> it was not because my life had been in danger, but in a spirit of anger, I struck him a blow. With the result that he never made it again. <laughs> he died on the spot. So, you didn't give yourself up? No, and for the following reasons. The man had no relatives or other connections who were dependent on him. And he had lived out the spirit of vegetation. And his place could soon be filled by someone who was more needed. While I, on the other hand, was indispensable to the happiness of my parents. My own happiness, and perhaps the silence. Through the outcome of the affair, I was cured with a desire to strike any more blows. And to satisfy an abstract justice, I did not care to ruin the lives of my parents as well as my own life. So, that's the way you value human life? In that instance, yes. But how about a feeling of guilt? The restoration of balance. I have no guilty feeling, as I have committed no crime. <laughs> I have received even given blows as a girl, and it was only the ignorance of the effect of blows on all people that caused the fatality. Yes, but it is two years of hard labor for homicide. Just as much for forgery. You may believe I had thought of that too, and many a night I dreamt I was in prison. <sighs> Is it as terrible to be behind bolts and bars? Yes, it is. First, disfigure your exterior by cutting off your hair. So if you did not look like a criminal before, you do afterward. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, you become convinced that you are a desperado. Hmm. It's the mask that they pull off. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> you jest? Then, then they cut down your rations so that every day, every hour, you feel a distinct difference between life and death. All life functions are oppressed. <sighs> you feel yourself groveling and your soul, which should be battered up and uplifted there, is put on a starvation cure driven back to a thousand years of time. You are only allowed to read what was written for the barbarians of the migratory period. You are only allowed to hear which that can never pass in heaven. But what happens here on earth will remain a secret. You are torn out of your environment moved out of your class. You come under from those who come under you. Sometimes, you have visions of living in the Bronze Age. Felt as if you went about in an animal skin, lived in a cave, and eat as of true. That's quite rational. Anyone who behaves as if you belong to the Bronze Age or to live in the historic costume. You Scott, you have behaved like a man of the Bronze Age, and here you are, allowed to live in the Golden Age. <laughs> what do you mean by that last expression? The Gold Age? Nothing. 
That's a lie. You are too cowardly to state your whole meaning. Am I cowardly? Do you think that? I wasn't cowardly when he dared to show myself in the scene. I suffered what I had. Do you know when one suffers from most? When one sits in there? <laughs> It is from the fact that the others are not sitting in there too. What others? The unpunished. Do you allude to me? Yes. But I haven't committed a crime. <laughs> so it's not a crime to commit murder. <laughs> no, an accident is not a crime. So it's an accident to slay a man? No, not always. There is manslaughter, homicide, assault resulting in death, with subdivisions with or without intent. However, now I am afraid of you. For you belong in the most dangerous category of human beings. The stupid. Ah, you think I'm stupid? Do you want me to prove that I think very shrewd? Will you agree that I think logically I should be when I say this? You were met with an accident which might have brought you two years of hard labor. You have escaped the ignominious penalty altogether. And here sits a man who also has been a victim of an accident. An unconscious suggestion. This man can wipe off the stain he has unwittingly brought upon himself only through scientific achievement. But for the attainment of this, he must have money. Much money, and that immediately. Don't you think that the other man, the unpunished one, would restore the balance of human relations if he is sentenced to a tolerable fine. Don't you think so? Yes. <laughs> well, we understand each other. <sighs> How much do you consider legitimate? Legitimate? The law decrees that a live man's worth is 50,000 pesos. As the disease has no relatives, there's nothing to be said on that score. <laughs> you will not understand. <laughs> ah, then I must speak more plainly. It is to me that you are to pay the fine. <laughs> I've never heard that a homicide should pay a fine to a forger. And there is no No! Else. Yes, you have me! <laughs> <laughs> now things are beginning to play. How much do you ask to become accomplished to the homicide? Six million pesos. That's too much. Where am I to get that? Hmm. I don't want to do that. I don't want to become a thief. <laughs> don't joke. Do you think that I will believe that? You have been deep into the case up until now? To think that I could make such a big mistake. But that's the way it always is with blunt people. One is fond of gentle people, and one is so easily believed that he is like. And on account of that, I have been a little watchful of those people whom I've been fond. So, you are fully convinced that I have held myself from that case? Yes, I'm sure of it. <laughs> and you will accuse me if you don't receive the six million pesos. Absolutely. You can get out of it. So it's not worth your while trying to do so. <laughs> do you think that I will give my father a fit for daughter? My husband a fit for wife? And my children a fit for a mother? <laughs> that shall never happen. Now, I'll go to the police and give myself... Oh, wait a moment. 
What for? Uh, I only thought that um, as I am not needed, I wouldn't need to be present and I could go. <laughs> you do not. Sit down and we will talk to the people. <clears throat> so, uh, what's going to happen now? Now things are clear to me. What do you see now? That's so remarkable. I see in the mirror that you are a thing. A simple, common thing. Just now, as you sit there in your shirt sleeve, I noticed that there was something wrong about my bookshelf. And I couldn't notice what it was. As I wanted to listen to you and observe you. Now that you become my antagonist, my sight is keener. I see that you have read your forgery story in Bernhardt's essay on hypnotic suggestion. And you turned the book upside down. So you stole that story too. <laughs> in consequence of all this, I consider that I have the right to conclude that you have committed your crime through need or because you were addicted to pleasures. If you, knew. if you know what I have lived and lived and still lived. Another thing is almost certain that you have not served your time here. You see that. Wait until the police come and you will know. Do you see? The first time I mentioned the police in connection with the tangible, you wanted to run them too. <laughs> to conclude, you have served one sentence but not another. That's why you were so difficult to get at. Did you? <laughs> PT? Do you consider yourself better than I am? Of course I do! As I am better, I am more intelligent than you are and more worth of the common will. <laughs> you are pretty crafty. <laughs> but not as crafty as I am. I stand in check myself. But nevertheless, <laughs> The next move, you can be checkmated. Shall we have another battle? What evil do you intend to do now? That is my secret. Mary, you are planning to write an anonymous letter to my husband to expose my secret. <laughs> yes! And you can stop. You dare not have me in prison, so you must let me go. And when I have gone, I can do what I please. <laughs> you devil, you struck my Achilles heel. Will you force me to become a murderer? You cannot, you timid creature. Well, you see, there's difference in people after all. You think that I cannot commit such thing as you? That's but then, if you force me to deal with you as I did with the coach, <laughs> you cannot. You dare not take the salvation out of the case. Couldn't do that. <laughs> then you don't believe that I ever took from that case. <laughs> you were too cowardly. <sighs> Just as you were too cowardly to tell your husband he's married to a murderer. <laughs> you were a different. Whether stronger or weaker, I am Whether more criminal or not, that doesn't concern me. But you are stupid. And that's stupid. You were stupid 
When you forge a man's name instead of begging as I have had to do. You were stupid when you stole out my book. Did you realize that I read my books? And you were stupid when you thought that you were more intelligent than I am and that you could fool me into becoming a thief. And you were stupid when you thought that the restoration of violence could be accomplished by having worlds two thieves instead of one. And you were the most stupid when you thought that I built my life happiness in Cornerstone without securely. Go. And write your animal letter to my husband about her wife being outside, which he did. was my fiance. <laughs> Do you give up? Uh, can I go now? Yes, you may go immediately. And you're still your father.